Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Pandemic Cooking. I will be your guest chef today. Uh, we are gonna learn how to make lasagna by popular request. Uh, first things first, we have to make the sauce. Now, if you'll see over here, I am making a meat sauce. I've got my ground beef, it's already browning in the pan. Okay, um, if you wanna make a vegetarian sauce, you can just skip right to the next step, okay? But I've got my ground beef, it's in the pan, there's a little bit of fat in the bottom. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some ingredients to that ground beef. So the first thing I'm gonna add is a couple of diced onions, right? Again, onion is something that you can add as much or as little as you want. I like a hefty amount of onion in there because I feel like it's just one of those things that lets everything else taste a little bit better. And you know, looking at it, I can say I probably even use a little bit more onion, but that's fine. Next, what I'm gonna put in is I'm gonna put in my garlic. Now this is about eight cloves of garlic. Uh, some people might say that's too much, but you just cut those people right out of your life because you don't need that kind of negativity. So I'm gonna take all this garlic and I'm gonna put it right in. Now, now that my beef is brown, I wanna make sure I don't burn my onions and garlic. Because onions, onions and garlic, when they burn, they get really bitter. So once everything is mixed in there, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the heat down to like medium, medium, low, whatever is not gonna burn the garlic in your oven, uh, on your stove. Everyone has a different stove, and so you should know it uh, well enough to know what temperature is not gonna burn your onions and garlic. And you're just gonna let that sit for a bit. I'm also gonna add a little bit of olive oil. Now, one thing you'll notice in this recipe, unlike all the other recipes I give you, is that I'm not giving you ingredients. Or, sorry, I'm not giving you ingredients, I'm not giving you measurements. Because what I like to do Italian or Italian style cooking. Hey Cliff, we're down again. The internet's out again. This is the real apocalypse, people. Um, <laughs> when I like to do Italian style cooking, I don't like to use measurements. I like to cook, as I teach my students, from the heart. So you feel the olive oil, you feel the garlic, you feel the onions, you smell it, you look at it, you touch it, you taste it, right? You put in as much as you think you need. So I added that. I can smell the olive oil in there specifically, so now I'm just gonna let those onions and garlic soften up a little bit. Next is I'm gonna add my spices. So, this crushed red peppers, this is what I like to add to my Italian cooking or my Italian style cooking to add a little bit of heat. Right, I feel like most food needs a little bit of heat. I say it gives the tongue something to do while you're eating. Uh, and I like to add a little bit of this. So what I'm gonna do is I don't wanna add it directly to it because uh, just in case I spill the whole thing in there, I'm gonna take it. Now with these crushed red peppers, you wanna crush them up a little bit more between your hands because the natural oils in your hands are actually going to uh, extract a little bit more of the flavor. Okay, and again, I'm just feeling it. I'm not making this a spicy sauce, but I'm just putting a little tiny bit of heat in there. Can you call uh, to your Next, I like to add Italiano seasoning, right? You can get this anywhere. This is generally a mixture of oregano, marjoram, dried peppers, garlic, probably some onion in there. There's a whole bunch of things. Uh, you can do your own Italian mixture if you want, if you don't like uh, so much oregano or you wanna add more whatever, you can do that. I just like to use this because I find it works just fine and it's easy peasy. So I wanna add enough, right? That's a measurement. If anyone sends me an email or an Instagram message and they're like, how much Italian seasoning did, did, did you put in it? I'm just gonna reply with enough. enough. That's it. So. I wanna give it a smell. I can smell the Italian seasoning. I can smell the red pepper. I can smell the onions and garlic, so I know there's enough of that in there. I do wanna add a little bit of black pepper because I add this to basically every protein that I use. Uh, basically every protein that I make, but even if this was a vegetariano one, I would still probably add a little bit of black pepper. Okay, and then salt. You need salt. All of your food needs to have salt. Doesn't matter what it is, it's gotta have salt. You're making cookies, you're putting a bit of salt in. Okay, so I'm gonna salt this. And remember to add less salt than you think you need because you can always add more later. You can never take salt away. So, as you can maybe see, uh, the onions are starting to soften up a little bit and so is the garlic. So that means I'm just about ready for the next step. So here's where my sauce differs a little bit from some other sauces, because I had a, a few more steps before I just add my tomatoes and whatnot. 
what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the heat up to maximum. I'm gonna turn the heat up really high. Now on this stove, that's a little bit dangerous because it might immediately burn, right? Uh, but I'm gonna watch it. As soon as it starts really sizzling, really bubbling, it's really hot, it's like just about to burn, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little bit of a deglazing liquid, okay? So what I'm using here is I am using some red cooking wine. You can use just regular red wine, excuse me. It's allergies, I don't <laughs> have the Rona. Um, you can use just regular red wine if you like. Uh, this is red cooking wine. This is already salted, right? Uh, so you have to be careful when you're cooking with that. If you wanna have it alcohol free, let's say you need it to be halal, you wanna use just some red wine vinegar, but you're gonna use less because it's really strong, right? What this is gonna do is when you put this in the sauce, it's gonna lift up anything that's stuck to the pan. And my aunt who taught me how to cook, uh, would say that it lifts up the good that's stuck to the bottom of the pan, okay? So this is, you probably can't hear it, but it's really starting to bubble and sizzle right in the bottom there, okay? So I'm just gonna leave that for just a little bit, just till it reaches the breaking point, and then I'm gonna put this red wine in. Once I put this red wine in, I'm gonna cook it until it's off sec. En français, in English, almost dry or off dry. Okay, uh, you wanna you want to definitely cook out almost all of the liquid from it. Otherwise, you're gonna end up with too much of like uh, a straight red wine flavor in your sauce rather than you just get that umami of the fermented wine flavor that you get from it. All right, so this is looking good. What I'm gonna do again, measuring is not for people like me. I'm gonna put this in. You can see there's some red wine in the bottom. Okay, I'm gonna put a little bit more in. And it's gonna smell, it's gonna smell like red wine, okay? Uh, now, some people ask me uh, if I use, like if I'm having a cooking wine at home, if I'm using like a really cheap wine, and I don't like to use a cheap wine when I'm cooking, I prefer to cook with only a wine that I'm gonna drink, okay? Um, generally, I am using this because it's what we have, I wouldn't be drinking this. Uh, but I like to get like, not a great bottle of wine, but a bottle of wine that you like, wouldn't be ashamed to serve someone else to use for my cooking. And because this pan is quite hot, you can see that basically all the liquid has disappeared. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to add two things. And I'm probably gonna need more than these two cans I have ready. I'm gonna add diced tomatoes. So you can see what the diced tomatoes look like on top. I'm gonna add that straight in. Then I'm gonna add crushed tomatoes, or it's sometimes called, what is it sometimes called? Crushed tomatoes or tomato sauce, right in, okay? I'm gonna give that a stir, and I wanna make sure that this sauce is a little bit more liquidy than maybe the other sauces, because this sauce, uh, the tomato sauce in here is actually what's gonna cook the lasagna, okay? So you wanna make sure it has enough liquid that it's gonna cook the noodles, uh, and not become just like a, a hard, a hard mass. So what I'm gonna do, let's see. I want a little bit more sauce in there. So I'm gonna grab a small can of tomato sauce to put in. Power school's back up and ready, thank you. It turns out we do not have a small can of tomato sauce. So I'm just gonna add part of this larger can here. And what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna cook this sauce down a little bit. So it is gonna lose some liquid. Uh, so it will thicken up a little bit. You can always add a bit more tomato sauce later, but we're gonna cook it because we really need those flavors to all come together. And seeing how much sauce I have in there, I already know that I wanna add a little bit more of these little flavoring agents, okay? So I wanna give it a smell. Smells good. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna cook this ideally for as long as you can. This is the kind of sauce that is great if you can cook it for a couple hours. It's excellent. Uh, I'm not gonna cook it for quite that long. If you let it sit in the fridge overnight, it's even better. The next day this sauce is awesome. 
So we're gonna take a little break and when we come back, I'm gonna show you how to layer your lasagna, the, the middle layers of, of your lasagna, and then you're ready to throw it in the oven. See you soon. Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, we're gonna finish making the lasagna now. If you'll come and see here, my sauce has been bubbling for a while. You can see a little bit of the fat has come to the top there. That's good, that's a good sign. That means you've got enough in there to really add some flavor to your sauce. And you see it's still liquidy enough that it's gonna cook the uh, lasagna noodles because I use raw, like uncooked lasagna noodles in my lasagna. I've oh, seen... you, don't, you don't use the no. raw good to use for lasagna ones? The what? Like the raw ones that say like put in a raw? Uh, no, I just, I use these ones, like just the mm. regular, I don't know, just the regular Catali ones. Because I find that if you don't use, um, like I find that if you use the other ones or if you cook these first, like it just gets too gummy, right? Mm -hmm. If you do the lasagna with this and you make sure your sauce is, is a little bit liquidy, these are gonna cook in the steam and they're gonna absorb the sauce and it's really gonna flavor the noodles too. Um, it's like when I make spaghetti, and I put the spaghetti back in the pot. I undercook my spaghetti a little bit intentionally, like just this, just this much, and I put it back in the pot and I put the sauce back in there and I cook it for like 30 seconds. The, so the spaghetti like absorbs the sauce and it just tastes so good. Okay. I, I do that too and people think I'm, I'm insane. Clearly, they're the insane ones. Yeah. Um, okay, so the lasagna is actually super simple. All you need are you need your noodles, uh, whatever brand you want, it doesn't matter. You're gonna need your mozzarella cheese for some layers. You're going to need uh, some ricotta cheese for the middle layer. I like to put basil in to flavor my ricotta cheese. You also need some Parmesan cheese that I'm gonna mix in with the ricotta, a little bit of black pepper, a little bit of salt. Um, Hello, welcome back everyone who's interrupting our video. That's fine, hello, thank you, thank you. The announcements were far worse. They were far worse. Um, so, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna layer up this lasagna. I'm gonna start it with my pan here. I'm gonna put a layer of sauce in the bottom, okay? Now you don't want like a ton, ton, ton of sauce, but you want a nice little layer of sauce in the bottom. That's gonna prevent it from sticking to the bottom. Now, the key for, for this lasagna that I make is that every noodle layer has a layer of sauce above it and below it, okay? So I've got this, this, this. I'm gonna overlap a little bit, that's okay. And then I've got my noodles here, and then I'm gonna put a little bit of sauce right on top, okay? I'm gonna give a little shaky shake. Next, on top of, no, we're leaving that in. This is all in, this all makes the cut. Uh, next, what we have is I have some cheese here. Uh, I like to use just re whatever regular mozzarella you have. And I've uh, grated this in the food processor because I am not willing to stand here for an hour grating cheese by hand. It really wouldn't take that long, but I like to use technology when I can. Goodbye, Curtis. Goodbye. Can we get Curtis in frame for a second? Goodbye, Curtis. Bye. Good luck with the show. Thanks, Curtis. All right. So what we're going to do is I've got my layer of lasagna here. I've got some cheese. I've got Adele here. She's going to come and judge what I'm doing because she judges everything I do. Hey. Right? And she can't it not smells, be involved. I can't not be involved. I can't just be hands off. Okay. Now here's how I do. I'm going to put... A little bit of sauce on top, right on top of the cheese. Okay. And then on top of this sauce, I'm going to put another layer of noodle. I'm going to press down because I want to make sure that I have room for my middle layer of ricotta, okay? This is a pretty shallow pan. I'd prefer to make it in a bit deeper pan. You can get some more layers in there, but that's okay. This is gonna work just fine. I say as I struggle monumental, <laughs> monumentously. Is that a word? I think so. It's now, it's, it's a pandemic word. <laughs> 
Okay, so, now, Adele and Sarah, you two have probably heard that a lot of people like to put a layer of bechamel in their lasagna. What do you think about that? How do you feel I've about that? I've never made it. I never have. Never have. But I do, I do the cheese differently. Like, I mix the ricotta of with... Of course you do. With... What I'm hearing is I do it better by... And tell us how you do no, it better. No, I don't do it better. I'm just... Because I just came in at just now, so I haven't seen the whole thing. But I do do one, like, cheese mixture... A ricotta or two yeah. layer, pardon me? I just do one layer of ricotta okay, in the middle. Okay, so that's what I do different. So I do a couple different layers of the ricotta and I don't do the layer of matzah, but my cheese mixture is like the ricotta, cottage, parm, and matzah. Oh, okay. And I like layer it up. Yeah, my, my, my middle mixture is just ricotta, salt, pepper, uh, parm, and basil. Like that's what I do for like that middle layer yeah, and yeah, yeah. it just really flavors it up, right? I do a layer of mozzarella and I do a layer of just plain ricotta because I actually just really love a good plain ricotta. And you salt, do you salt it at nope. all? No, nope. just, just plain ricotta. Oh, see, I find that ricotta needs that salt and pepper. I right? like it plain. Interesting. It, what, and what I actually like about doing these videos, I'm, I don't actually think the way I do it is better. I do like learning. <clears throat> Yeah, it's, right. on, it's on film, so... Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, a lie is on film. A lie. Uh, no, I don't. I really appreciate what... You I, like to learn how everyone do does like things differently. And I do like to see, like, huh, that's interesting. I haven't done it that way, but that is what I would try. Like, that layer of mozzarella mm -hmm. sounds... And looks delicious. And I will say that my lasagna has been told it is delicious because Andrew told me it's good, and he's told me multiple times the meatballs I made for him when we first started living together were disgusting. But, oh, okay, I was gonna say, but he loves you, so you don't know if right? his opinion is really bad. No, if he doesn't like it, he'll tell me. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. It's, we're past that point where we have to lie to each other. Vic, Vic won't, like, he'll, he doesn't love a red sauce, like, he finds it too acidic, and he, like, will tell me every time, he's like, ugh. I'll eat it, but I'm not happy about it. But we also rarely cook for each other. Actually, he cooks more for me. Does he? Yeah, I, well, we just eat differently. Like, he can eat, like, 600 grams of pasta and be satisfied, and mm, yeah. I will die. Yeah. Wait, is 600 grams you, a lot or a little? A, a lot. lot. Do you know what my favorite meme, I think, oh. so far is? <laughs> In the pandemic, my favorite meme is, like, so my 600-pound life, are they going to call me after this, or do I call them? Like, how do I get in touch with being on the show? Um, because... I'm gonna need to be on it. So this lasagna is gonna be a little bit overflowy. It's gonna be a little bit real jam-packed in here, but that's okay. I don't so, mind. What are you gonna do to prevent it making a mess in the oven? Probably put a layer, or probably bake it on top of a baking sheet. Yes. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put it right in a baking sheet and then put it in the oven, and that's gonna be a lot better. So, because uh, it is gonna like overflow and be a goopy mess, but that's okay. Yeah. Our lives are messes right now. Our lives are overflowing our goopy, goopy messes. messes. Our <laughs> lives are goopy messes. So let's let our lasagnas be goopy messes. And too. let's be real. Do we want a nice, neat, clean lasagna? No. no. You want your lasagna goopy. It tastes better. My, my lasagna always overflows, even if I use the deepest pan. What I really find that I like about this method of lasagna that I do is it ends up being a very firm lasagna. Like once it, it once is. it cools a little bit, it ends up like you can really it's cut it like a, like a yes. piece of cake, right? Like mm. this is you know it's yes. not it's not soupy the the noodles end up super flavorful because they just soak up mm -hmm. all the extra liquid in this sauce mm -hmm. Adele's lasagna is a little soupy it is and especially um uh, the keto lasagna what? I use I use zucchini noodles so oh my, just, so it's just soup it's just soup so I peel zucchini which is very wet is like a very moist vegetable and I really, really have to let it set. Like I can dehydrate it in the oven for like an hour beforehand, but it's a real pain in my butt. That so, sounds like a lot of work. It's a lot it of is. Work. I've done so, the keto, I've made the keto lasagna with the zucchini, and it's like sitting there waiting for your zucchini to pre-cook. It's and like somebody, it was Matt, it was Miss Stedman. Miss Stedman told me, like, I don't cook my lasagna noodles. I'm like, yes, Mandy, like never again will I cook mine. Yep. Because my mom always cooked them. So I just thought like that was like the the only way to do it. My mom never cooked hers. And then when I learned that, I yeah. was like, wow, that was foolish of me for however many years. Well, I, you know, I think it might just be the older generation that tended to cook their, their lasagna noodles. When I worked at a bakery yeah. as the cook, I changed a lot of their recipes 
and one of them was not cooking the lasagna noodles and then suddenly everyone was like this is so much better it was mm -hmm. such a mess before and i'm well, like yeah because yeah. it's it's not a, it soaks up all that liquid so um yeah. that that does that sounds very good to me this is not very do i have food. enough cheese on there let's Let's, let's, let's pan down. Let's pan down, pan, pan down. down, pan down. Now you see I'm making a huge mess on the stove. That's fine, okay? I got some Parmesan cheese on top too, whatever. So this lasagna is about, it's, it's approximately 14 million calories. Uh, so please don't eat it all in one sitting. But all that we're gonna do is I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna cover it in tin foil. But first, before I cover it in tin foil, I'm gonna spray the tin foil with a little bit of uh, cooking spray, and that's gonna keep it from sticking to the cheese. Oh, brilliant. So brilliant, thank you. Now you can make noise with the tin foil. That's fun. <laughs> okay. And as always, with a tin foil, shiny side towards the food. Why? Oh. <laughs> because I said so. Okay, sometimes I just like forget, I'm like, whatever. I think it's I think it's because it traps the heat in better, mm. right? Because this side is going to reflect more heat, mm -hmm. so it's going to like tra keep the heat in. Mm -hmm. I think like that's what I think. Uh, so I'm just going to spray it. What this does is, is this makes it so that the uh, the, the cheese best part is not going to stick. Now at this point, you can do one of two things. You can bake it right away, and I would bake this for ugh, 45 minutes. Oh, I bake it longer. An hour, maybe. Oh, I don't know. Least. Bake Three. it once it's once it's like real all melted, and you can stick a knife through it, and you don't get a ton of resistance. Take the tin foil off, uh, let it brown a little bit on top, and it's good to go. The other thing you can do is you can let this cool a little bit, and then you can throw it right in the freezer. Okay, if you're gonna throw it in the freezer, what I would do is I would cover it with plastic wrap first, and then tin foil, uh, and then put it in the freezer and have it whenever you want. The other thing you can do is if you want to freeze portions of it, you can freeze it in smaller tins, like loaf tins or smaller pans, circular pans, whatever, and you can freeze those and then you can take them out and have as just uh, a couple servings at a time, right? That's a great way to meal prep. Um, I've done it with takeout containers from like the wholesale club, right? Mm -hmm. And then boom, you just have meals forever. Uh, but if we're gonna bake this right now, we're gonna put it onto top of a baking sheet or a cookie sheet. We're gonna throw it in the oven at 350 for an hour, maybe more. And then you're gonna have delicious, delicious lasagna. So remember, uh, I didn't give you all a recipe because this is cooking from the heart. Uh, so if you have any questions, send me an email or a message on Instagram and I'll be able to uh, answer or comment Any, below. Or comment, comment below. below. That's much better. Remember, if you ask for amounts of ingredients, I'm just going to say enough. So don't comment that. <laughs> uh, please remember to smash that like and subscribe button. And we will see you next time. Thank you so much.